Hello all, uh, welcome back to Free Engineering School. Uh, today we are going to discuss about the general types of uh, elements in finite element analysis, uh, mainly for focusing into abacus and uh, what are the element type selections for our structural analysis. These two topics are uh, taken based on the previous uh, studies which we have captured uh, related to the structural analysis uh, which includes linear, non-linear and quasi-static uh, structural studies. Here we will discuss about the general types of uh, elements uh, used in our day-to-day uh, -day FEA studies. Uh, there are broadly classified into three one dimensional elements, two dimensional elements and uh, three dimensional elements. In one dimensional elements uh, by definition if uh, the one dimension that is x is very very large as compared to other two uh, we will call it as a uh, one dimensional elements and in the second one is uh, two dimensional elements. Uh, here we again uh, further classified into two plane stress elements and uh, plane stress elements. Sorry, uh, plane stress elements and plane strain elements. Uh, in plane strain elements, uh, the third direction that is Z is very very negligible as compared to other two like uh, X and Y. So in this plane strain, plane stress elements, uh, the Z directional stress is negligible or completely zero, but uh, we, we may experience some kind of uh, strain in uh, third direction. And uh, the second one is a uh, plane strain elements. It is the inverse of uh, plane stress elements. Here, uh, the third direction is greatly larger as compared to other two. And we, here, we uh, may experience the sort of stresses uh, coming into picture uh, in third direction as well. But the strain is uh, very negligible. The third one is a three dimensional uh, elements. As the name indicates, uh, by definition, uh, it is having a three dimensions uh, all three dimensions all three directions have a dimensions like uh, xyz so we'll call it as a 3d uh, three uh, three dimensional elements type uh, this slide will further classify or understand uh, the difference between 1d 2d and uh, 3d elements so in 1d elements we'll uh, just see the line kind of structures in 2d elements we'll see a uh, the the triangle or uh, the quad quadrilateral if you see is the the majorly uh, the third dimension is negligible we cannot see the third dimension here so we will call it as a 2d elements uh, basically the 2d triangle or 2d quad elements so here we have a mid side nodes for this we will call it as a second order if it is a corner nodes alone we will call it as a first order elements in 3d elements uh, all three dimensions are uh, considered here uh, if you see the tetrahedral and uh, we have a three dimensional uh, uh, dimensions here uh, likewise of our triangular prism and hexahedrals uh, these are the main uh, element types uh, which are uh, used in our uh, which are uh, generally used for our structural studies so these elements will have a nodes as i mentioned uh, each corner nodes have uh, their own specific degrees of freedom to uh, to transfer their uh, uh, loads or displacement. So I have categorized uh, element type with respect to the nodal degrees of freedom. Suppose if you take a stress 1D element, it is having a capability of uh, nodal uh, transmission in XYZ directions. For beam, it is having a 6 degrees of freedom, both uh, transmission and rotational. For 2D, uh, simple uh, elements will have only a transmission in X and uh, y or y and z so one is negligible other two can be translated so in 2d plate elements we have a uh, three translational and uh, two rotational degrees of freedom the third one has been uh, neg uh, not considered because of the uh, uh, cutoff plane rotational so uh, this will have a total five degrees of freedom for a plate 2d and for uh, generalized uh, 3D brick elements, we'll have a translation in XYZ direction with respect to each node. So this is all about the nodal degrees of freedom. And coming to the nomenclature or the notation of uh, each element, mainly uh, in abacus. So I'll uh, discuss uh, this nomenclature or notations uh, in detail. 
so if you take a c 3d 20 rhd element type uh, so what is c uh, c is a continuum of stress and displacement uh, type where we will use the only for to identify the what are the stresses and displacement in the components we will call we will use a continuum if it is a thermal or a heat transfer problems we will use a dc and if it is a heat transfer convection or diffusion kind of study we will use a dcc for acoustic uh, you can use a ac and electromagnetic emc likewise uh, you need to uh, mention uh, so that uh, abacus will easily understand the type of problem so the type of problem has been uh, mentioned and what kind of uh, elements it is so whether it is a 1d or 2d or 3d that can be uh, uh, symbolized by uh, uh, 3d or 1d or 2d so for uh, link elements if you are uh, using the link elements in the analysis we will uh, mention it as a 1d and if it is a plane strain it is a pe plane stress is a ps so this is the uh, nomenclature we should uh, use for uh, with respect to the each element type you use the and for a 3d three dimensional uh, we will use a 3d and for axis symmetric as well we will use a ax or a gax that is axis symmetric with twist and what is the 20 this is the number of nodes which uh, component or element which is uh, used uh, in uh, analysis so here we use the uh, 20 nodes uh, here uh, the element will have a 20 nodes so, so it has mentioned as a 20 and uh, other three are very optional uh, it, it depends on your uh, type of analysis uh, you used uh, can be uh, further add these three options the r is a reduced integration uh, with, uh, here uh, incompatible mode uh, like a quads and bricks or improved surface stress formulations if you want to uh, test it you can use the r this is uh, usually call it as a reduced integration the h is a hybrid uh, type of element you can use it uh, or you can neglect it it is a very optional and t is again uh, optional we we'll, uh, use it for heat transfer convection uh, or uh, some kind of four pressure uh, calculations or piezoelectric uh, studies so these three are very optional uh, you can use it or uh, you can neglect it uh, based on your uh, type of simulations so in this slide just i have mentioned uh, the different uh, structural uh, elements types uh, which we use uh, in our day to day api analysis so before going to that we'll just uh, touch upon the integration point because uh, all the structural or any type of result any type of analysis will uh, give the results at the integration point then uh, when you plotting the results or if you are extracting the result from the each software then it will extrapolate it to the uh, corner nodes and will, will, will give the results so what is integration point uh, where the point will have calculate the stiffness and mass of an element uh, that for that particular point so we will call it as integration point so all the results are uh, keep kept it in uh, integration point then uh, uh, it will extrapolate it to the corner nodes later so here again we will uh, will will we'll, uh, different uh, will divide into two categories a fully integration and a reduced integration if it is a fully integration it will take more time uh, in terms of time consumption it will take more time because we will have a uh, four integration points we need the analysis will capture the result for all these four integration points uh, if it is a reduced integration points so you will have only one integration for, for uh, uh, first order interpolation so we will we'll, we'll take a very less time uh, for uh, second order interpolation uh, you will have uh, again mid side nodes for each mid side nodes again we will we'll create a integration point so for the uh, for each uh, mid side nodes of, uh, and each the corner nodes will have a integration point so, so again it will be a uh, uh, very much time consuming uh, as compared to uh, uh, this uh, simple reduced integration problems so uh, the, the, these uh, integration points should be taken care with respect to the 
uh, order uh, like a first order or second order uh, interpolation parameters so this mainly uh, uh, depends on the types of analysis or uh, types of uh, results you are uh, expecting uh, from the particular simulations so in uh, in deeper we'll discuss uh, when we start with the abacus uh, abacus know how uh, in coming days so and then uh, the stress and displacement elements so which are uh, basically used for our structural studies uh, the c3 d4 as i see the c uh, represent the continuum and this is 3d is the th three dimensional elements and it is having a four nodes this is uh, as mentioned in the previous uh, notation uh, explanation likewise there are uh, different uh, c3 d4 elements with respect to our glasses and linear pressure or uh, triangular prisms and uh, this is the h it's a constant pressure uh, hybrid type of elements and c3 d8 is the uh, a eight noded linear brick uh, so this is a c3 d4 is a triangular uh, tetrahedron and this is the eight noded linear brick and uh, c3 d10 is the second order uh, uh, tetrahedron like uh, it will having a, it is having a mid side node and c3 d 10 m is the modified uh, tetrahedron with our class controls these are the different uh, uh, or we can say these are the uh, extended element type uh, in uh, c3 d 10 so this is all about the generalized uh, general uh, types of elements uh, which are regularly used in our uh, structural studies so coming to the element type selection uh, for our structural studies uh, i have characterized uh, based on my previous study which uh, we have done uh, so i have mentioned the problem type and uh, what are the element type we can recommend it uh, to use it and uh, what are the things we need to avoid it so for stress and displacement uh, for simple geometry if you want to extend the stress and displacement so we need to use uh, first order quad and hex uh, like a C3D8 kind of elements to get the appropriate results. We can uh, avoid the second order because it will take much time to run the simulations. And suppose uh, if you want to extract the same stress and displacement uh, accuracy level with complicated geometry, we can directly go ahead uh, with the second order like C3D10, C3D10M, etc. Because the complicated geometry we cannot mesh with the uh, C3D8 uh, quad elements. So for greater accuracy, we can avoid uh, the C3D4 because it is very stiffer and we cannot uh, uh, get a, uh, appropriate results. And for contact with uh, bending, if you are uh, doing some bending simulation and uh, involved uh, contact as well, we can use an incompatible mode type that is, that is a C3D8I or C3D10I type of elements. But uh, we can use a first order fully integrated uh, quad or hexa or second order quad or hexa. So for bending again uh, with uh, no contact, uh, suppose if you have a single uh, uh, component with with, uh, with uh, no contact we can use uh, directly a second order quad or hex uh, for simple geometry we can avoid uh, first order fully integrated uh, quad and hex here <coughs> so again it will be based on the time uh, time consumption uh, for our analysis for a stress concentration uh, category uh, analysis if you want to focus on the stress concentration for a particular uh, location we can directly use a second order fine mesh uh, to to extract the results uh, better to avoid the first order for uh, dynamic studies just i have given uh, the simplified uh, uh, types because we need to further detail study further uh, we need to study on the dynamic part so we will we'll, uh, take upon the next uh, in the next chapters so for natural frequency finding uh, in linear dynamics you can use directly second order so not done, don't go for uh, fully integrated you can go for reduced integration for uh, finding out the natural frequencies for non-linear dynamic uh, suppose if you want to study for the impact studies suppose a drop, drop a sudden drop of uh, drop test or some kind of uh, a crash test you can use a first order uh, any type like c3d8 or c3d4 element type 
so better to avoid the second order since uh, the dynamic will have a uh, much complications uh, so it will take larger time so better to avoid the uh, second order element uh, yes uh, that's all about today's discussion uh, please uh, write your comments uh, so we will we'll take it uh, your points in the next time so bye for now thank you